Millions of years ago, the South Dakota we know of today was a densely vegetated coastal wetland. This dig site was once home to the Edmontosaurus, a huge plant-eating duck-billed dinosaur that traveled in herds of thousands. Now, it's a deathbed. Edmontosaurus is a duck-billed dinosaur, a herding dinosaur. Uh, he looks like a big duck. His head looks like a duck. Basically, it's the, the largest duck-billed dinosaur there is. But they're huge, they're T-Rex size, and they traveled in huge numbers. If you think about a thousand of them walking through this valley in a migration, they would have eaten everything in sight, they would have been very noticeable, and of course, some would have died. This one layer of bone had over 10,000 individuals. And there are 300 plus bones per animal. That's tens and tens of thousands of bone here. This is what's known as a secondary deposit. These dinosaur bones were brought here from another place. And we know it's by like a river sediment because we get, well, the sand still in there. We get the little river animals. We'll get crocodile, we'll get turtle. We'll even get little uh, freshwater gastropods. What killed them, we don't know yet. Did they die year after year at the spot? Or do we have a mass killing at one section and then the bones washed here later? So we've got a lot of questions to answer. One thing about bones tumbling down a stream is that they don't stay together. But for a paleontologist, this just means more time to play in the dirt. That kind of makes it fun. If you're putting a skeleton together, you got to do a lot of work. If you dig the left humerus, you keep digging until you find that right humerus the exact same size. So we have nine or ten of those bones at work, and none of them match. So you have to dig a lot of bones to do the 320 bones of one duckbill dinosaur. This is what a full skeleton of an Edmontosaurus looks like. These are the bones we're after. Right now we've got, oh, I don't know, 30 or 40 bones already uncovered over the last couple days that they're steadily, uh, right now, just gluing and uh, uh, we're foiling them and getting them out of the ground. We figure in the next few days we'll probably have about 100 or 150 bones ready to bring back to Indianapolis. It sounds like they found a lot of bones, but there are thousands yet to be discovered. And there's only one way to do it. You gotta get out, walk around. Sometimes you can't even walk. You have to get on your hands and knees and crawl and look for broken bits of bone. You, you find the broken fragments and you try to find where they eroded from. You look up on the hillside, you kind of scramble up the hills looking and you'll see a, a bone fragment just sticking out the side of a hill and that's where you know to dig. But every single one of them is found by, by people doing footwork and just getting a sunburnt neck basically, looking down on the ground and seeing what they can find. Cretaceous gumbo, all that's missing is the top of the food chain, T-Rex. A 110 degree heat, blowing winds, all forgotten as we uncovered one duckbill fossil after another. Then I made an interesting discovery. At first I thought it was a nanotooth. I'm hoping it's a nanotooth. Often left behind by the nanotyrannosaurus, a smaller relative of the T-Rex. It's a pretty interesting curving bone. Further observation revealed that it was actually a claw. A first for this site. Holy smokes, that's pretty cool. <laughs> first claw found. We don't know what, theropod, meat eater. We found their teeth. We found their bones. Looks like we found their claws. More poison. Victor I mean, explained the importance of this find. All those are to find a claw tells you that the dinosaur died here. Uh, the teeth are just a sign that the dinosaur fed here, but the actual claw meant that that dinosaur actually perished. So not only, uh, you know, so all of a sudden you're saying, oh wow, another element here, the dinosaur died with the duckbill. So all of a sudden you have two dinosaurs that died. The scavenger and the scavenger. Finding something new is the spirit that drives us. That's why we do what we do. The world is an open book of possibilities and it's available to anyone. So keep your eyes open, you never know what you might find. That's the tail of a baby. Yeah, that's the tail of a baby. Oh, that's a baby. Yeah. I don't know if it's the tail of a baby. <laughs> that's, it could be the tail of an adult, it's just the very end of the tail. Okay, it's the tail of a dwarf adult. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's the end of the tail. End of the tail. That's the end of the tail. <laughs>